story. Even when I say the president of Uganda, you are Museveni. Not to begin with, you are Museveni, and assume everybody knows he's the president of Uganda. So don't assume the listener knows. Mm -hmm. So, uh, as the majority of, of the court is reading their op their opinion, uh, which was read by Justice Ezekiel Mhanguzi, the Chief Justice says we are going to take a break and we shall come back. The assumption was that then we shall have a minority view because there was someone who claimed to be a minority because already you see that they already seven to eight, so you assume there will be a minority view. When they go for the break, they called in the lawyers and uh, my sources within the lawyers that went, including the Attorney General, went to the chambers of the uh, of the justice, and this was discussed. They asked Justice Chisache that Justice Chisache, these are the colleagues actually, it's not even the Chief Justice, they asked Justice Chisache that Justice Chisache, we as a court have not read your opinion. How come you're going to read an opinion that you've not given us as a court to have the benefit of reading through to the public? Can you do this at a later date? Can you do it tomorrow? Can you? This is such insist that she will not. The rest of the members of the court say unanimously that we shall not go and join you as a reading something which we have not been party mm. to. Okay, mm. now we come for the benefit of the listener. Are other justices entitled to know one of their colleagues' opinion before it is read? Is it, is it law? Is it practice? Custom? It is custom. It is not law. And actually, Justice Chisaja, when she begins reading her dissent, she begins by saying that she is not bound by she is not bound by by, by, by that custom. Mm. She says it's not any law in Uganda that I'm bound by anyone. I can read my decision uh, from anywhere I want it without even necessarily giving it to the members of the court. But the contention of the members of the court, they ask uh, Justice Chisaja, Honorable but Justice Chisaja, that how can we know that we are in the minority and you are in the minority? Because we may have seen things differently and in some instances ha may have agreed. Because they all didn't agree that, the, that they should be cost slapped on the petition. Because mm. it would limit other petitioners from coming back to the court. So, establish that without reading. How do they establish that there is a disagreement between them, them and her if she has not submitted her Perfect. ruling to them? In draft. Yeah. As the court is seated, uh, the, other members of, the other members of the public, the media, is waiting for it comes out. They see the Attorney General erupting out of the Supreme Court and going. Justice Chisaja comes back and tells the media that my decision has been confiscated by the, on the orders of the Chief Justice. She says, I'm going back to the chambers to look for my decision. She says she comes back with a photocopy. That photocopy, even the photocopy is not clear. That's why she keeps explaining to people that here I mean this, here I don't mean the other. That shows you, to me, that shows that she had not actually prepared. But then today she comes. Today she also had another scene. She's actually locked out of the Supreme Court gate. She gives a, an interview at the Supreme Court gate when the Supreme Court to journalists. She says, yes, judges are not supposed to be giving interviews. Yes, she has given so many. But because of the unconstitutional behavior of the Chief Justice, I'm forced to act like this. She's saying she's going to give Malema very easy a judgment. A judgment on a recusal application. But Justice Dolo had issued... An a, a judgment on Malema Berizzi's matter two days ago. And that, in law, a recusal application is handled by the judge whose recusal is in question. And it's that judge that gives a decision, not the other members of the court. That is the Ugandan practice. So, it, it would be hard. You really need them to be taught uh, journalism. Again, you have started the story in the middle. If there was an application, you should say there was an application by, just, by so and so, asking judge X, Y, Z to recuse themselves from the case. Mm. The judges concerned are Andrew, John, and David. They are the ones supposed to issue a, whether a ruling or a judgment, whether the they are recusing the themselves or not. The I just want the listener here to get context. So, my name is walks to court, asks court that Justice Dolo is not fit to be in the Bobby Wayne petition. Or we, Justice, uh, to or sit in, this, on the bench in, the bench, in this, in this they, 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 petition. Yes. The Chief Justice uh, says, okay, let me listen to your case, because by judicial practice, it is the person supposed to hear himself or herself, the person whose reputation is now in question. So the Chief Justice gives a, a, a decision on that matter two days ago. Surprisingly, today, Justice Chisaj is the Supreme Court saying that she also has a decision to give Malema Ruiz, apparently because she has seen him around. And yet, she, uh, in practice, she's not supposed to issue any, any judgment any, on this matter. Any, it is the affected judge who is supposed to recuse himself or not. Yes. So even the other question, now context of who Justice Kisache is. Justice Kisache has had such controversy, especially at the Supreme Court, because she's the oldest sitting judge. She even applied to be Chief, Chief Justice with Oinji Dolo, but uh, uh, unfortunately... How old is she? 
I'm not sure of how. Okay, gentlemen, I think these those are the facts of the case. We want to begin with the Charles Mausha. What do you think of this? <coughs> what do you make of it? Well, well I, I think uh, if you look at it from the perspective of uh, behavior of judges and the sup and uh, the Supreme Court and the digging up of uh, justice such as uh, uh, Korea. She's the most senior judge on the Supreme Court. She applied, like uh, Joel said. You, you, you find quite a lot of contradictions in what should have happened. The most dramatic is actually the one on uh, recusal is a difficult word for many people. Withdrawing. My name of his application was withdraw yourself because, withdraw yourself because, because you, you are biased. biased. Against? against? Mm. Yes. yes. And, and uh, uh, the Chief Justice gave, gave his decision. decision. But, you're but you're playing, playing into, into some, some kind, kind of political of drama. drama. Because, because to say, say that, that other, other people, people cannot, cannot review, review my ruling, they don't, they don't change, change it, it, but they know what you're going to say. Mm. It would have been funny for other judges, justices of the Sumer Supreme Court to sit for the camera mm. and take in, appear to agree, eh? yes, they are dissenting, but appear to endorse your mm. views they when they don't know, know and they are learning yeah, them man. as you read out mm. to the rest of the court. So the normal practice think, is that the judges sit in a conference, yes. share each other's judgments yes. or rulings, mm. so that when they go to court, they know the position of each mm. and everyone on the bench. Mm. Yes. This is normal practice. I also know that it happens in practice. The, 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 the challenge with that also is that, yes, it's not by the rules of the court, it's not by law. It's, it's not mandated. Custom. It's just custom. Mm. The challenge with that is... And custom is, is as important as, by the no, way, No, but law. if you read uh, Justice Kanyehamba's uh, autobiography, mm. you realize that there are dangers also in that. Mm. Because then comes in some cajoling. Please mm. change. You, might, you made a mistake. What does this mean for us? Uh, and, and, and maybe she wanted to avoid that. Who knows? Mm. I, I'm told that before, um, some judges were disappearing out of this city to go and hide somewhere on farms so that eh, they are not contacted to be cajoled, to be put under pressure or, on their decision. But that was before the, the, the withdrawal of the case. But in, in this case, she was just one among eight? Yes. In, in which case, her ruling would well, be well, inconsequential? Well, dissenting judgments uh, by precedent have in some cases become very, very important. Majority views of the court. Eh? Pardon? Dissenting judgments in many cases, judges like Justice uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg tells us, are not to say that my colleagues are wrong. Yes. Are to say that in the future, adopt this decision as a court. Yes. The court has a blind spot here. I agree. I'm in the minority, but in the future. Yes. It, they they, they become very important. And, and especially, uh, it, well, not at the highest level, which is the Supreme Court. If a dissenting judgment was coming at uh, a lower level, say court of appeal constitutional mm. court sometimes you have found uh, situations where i, I have evidence of that yes. just to know Mujuni ruled in he was a single one of on a five, on bench of five in the constitutional court mm. in the case of me and charles obo he's the one who ruled in our favor mm. but when we went to the supreme court mulenga's ruling was based on to Mujuni's ruling the yes. majority ruling in the supreme court reflected the minority the dissenting judgment yes. of the court mm. of appeal we have to take another break when we come back we shall continue with the detailed discussion of the behavior of just such what is she up to the hottest debate on all relevant topics live on kfm's hot seat tonight kfm's hot seat covers all the relevant topics every weekday 7 to 8 p.m vpn views people and news these women who have been killed are harlots they're prostitutes they're what well, hey, who yeah, don't you have sisters don't you have mothers could you say that about us vpn views people and news no 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 you see you see listen maturely listen listen maturely this is what i've told you yes. having a fleet of women in parliament and they don't bite is useless. Oh my god. Sarah, Sarah, Sarah let's not make sweeping statements. Okay, let me give really. you another example, yeah. please. The KFM VPN. So Look at an issue like water. It oh. affects us women so much. Yes, but we need to have water because water is important for production. VPN. Every Saturday, 9 to 11 a.m. Only on 933 KFM. The way we spend our moments is the way we spend our lives. So nurture every single one. Nurture the perfect start to the perfect day moments, the early riser moments, the lie inlet moments, the let's have breakfast in bed today moments, nurture the lazy moments, the crazy moments, the toast for me porridge for you and cereal for them moments, because life is made of moments and moments are made to be nurtured. With Minute Maid Delight, nurture the moment, global number one juice and juice drinks brand, Minute Maid. 
nurture the moment. Introducing Uganda's new hero. The Hero Hunter, the Sawazira Mbazira. Enjoy a fitted wide carrier, super mileage for bigger profits and a powerful 125cc engine. Be a hero today. Get yourself a Hero Hunter 125cc by just paying 495,000 shillings. Visit Mantra Motorbike Showrooms Countrywide or call 0800 112 We also have Dawn 100, Hunter 150, x 200 and Scooter Destiny. Own a hero. Be a hero. Extraordinary could be right there in front of you without you even knowing it. It's something unique, rich, and rewarding. Full of character. A bold expression of flavor like no other. Expect Extraordinary. Guinness made of more alcohol is not for sale to persons under the age of 18 please drink responsibly are you an o-level lever or are you interested in studying in canada gombe education service brings you an opportunity to enroll for a high school diploma or ssd ontario secondary school diploma at an affordable fee through their jazz canada pathway program powered by tvo ilc in partnership with Bremer college toronto the program enables you to get placement into leading colleges and universities in canada usa and uk without any difficulty it is an alternative to our advanced level. Our academic year runs for 10 months. For more information, visit our office in Zambia near the American Embassy or contact plus 256-708-700-002. That's plus 256-708-700-002. Email info at canadapathway.ges. Website is www.ges.ug. These moments were nurtured by Minute Maid Delight. The way we spend our moments is the way we spend our lives. So nurture every single one. Nurture the perfect start to the perfect day moments, the early riser moments, the lion late moments, the let's have breakfast in bed today moments. Nurture the lazy moments, the crazy moments, the toast for me, porridge for you, and cereal for them moments. Because life is made of moments, and moments are made to be nurtured. With Minute Maid Delight, nurture the moment. Global number one juice and juice drinks brand. Minute Maid, nurture the moment. 93393 KFM KFM's hot seat. hot seat Hear the real story behind the story Coming right at you Only on 933 KFM Welcome back to this edition of the hot seat Featuring a panel of the most experienced journalists and pundits To discuss the major business of the week Of course we have Charles Mwangusha We have Obed Katurebe We have Kwez Tabar We have Ivan Rugambo And the most regular plus of course The infant in the studio uh, Joel Mokisa I, I want to come to you Kwez what do you make of this confusion at the Supreme Court? Every single thing in Uganda always seems to have some added controversy, somebody acting out of step with what you would expect. I think I'm the least qualified on this uh, panel to it's discuss not the legal matters, matters of it, but judiciary. The of it, yes. But I think, uh, I mean, it's, it's not any different. It's an ex extension of uh, the same drama we see in our other two arms of government, uh, whether it's parliament, which takes it to the very extreme, or you know the conduct of the of the executive so it's uh that's uganda yeah that's uganda at uh its best or you can say at its worst well, that is vintage uganda timothy Gallagher would agree with that position i would and uh to me the, the interesting bit isn't so much the details of it but just the the stage at which our judiciary has got it to this what you'd call like activism I mean, this open case of have a press conference says that from today onwards, I'm going past the judicial spokesperson, calling the chief just by name. I mean, the, the whole chaos within there reflects to some degree uh, the, the other chaos within the NRM, uh, especially during the primaries. So I guess uh, all three branches of state finally are now like in sync as an internal revolt and chaos, mm -hmm. personal fights, ego fights and all that. Uh, we haven't mm -hmm. yet gotten into the one between the speaker and the deputy speaker in the next two months. So, um, as some of us have been saying, basically this is seven is about it too. Um, you know, there are many institutions in Uganda historically that were shielded from this kind of public scrutiny that were devoid of drama, exposition of their uh, either corruption, incompetence, mismanagement, chaos. One of them was the central bank. When there was parliamentary hearings, the things that were exposed it reflected 
there were battles between the board of directors of the central bank and the and, and the governor then there were battles between the governor and the igg then there were battles between <laughs> the <governor laughs> now the supreme court was that last yes. bastion where uh aquanimity decorum prestige pedigree had remained but now with the actions of <laughs> just such it has also seems to be going to the dogs ivan rugambo yeah i i i think that uh it's it's very interesting because like you said it, 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 it until yesterday it seemed that the the, the sole remaining vestige of that kind of uh, dignity yeah, dignity that is associated and, and uniquely and and the supreme court and for the judiciary that 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 perception or that that reputation is very important because that is how where it derives its legitimacy the perception that you occupy a certain unique elevated position that puts you in a position in a unique position to arbitrate over matters of state and give final say on positions and all other and that is why they are limited to give uh, interviews to the press this is why they are not allowed to do any other job after you know like you know that's why they are shielded so much from from many many many, many other uh, things because the the, the the idea is to protect their the their, their, their position but i think like we i think we had hinted out it it, it is it perhaps is <coughs> very uh, naive of us to accept that the the court could remain an island in a country where this has become this dramatic uh, dr patient for drama uh, you know, I, I thought has KFM become, has remained an uh, island of sanity uh, and uh, a notion of insanity uh, uh, where that has become the norm rather than the exception so to have expected the Supreme <laughs> Court to remain to, rem uh, re and, uh, <laughs> to remain uh, <laughs> uh, the, 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 the okay <laughs> okay let's listen to Obed Obed give well, us your gloss over this no no not gloss over mm. this. I think polish it up and we see <sighs> Our ideas are unanimous, probably like yesterday's ruling. Really. <laughs> 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 I do agree with Kwezi when Kwezi was putting his very few points. To, uh, he was just reading my mind. We, this kind of we've put politics of appeasement in every sector of uh, managing our uh, our government, and I think this is the price we are paying. You remember, it's not only the Supreme Court. Incidentally, we are saying people are now on winning Doro, but I mean, it's almost all over. Just uh, last year, when um, Honorable Anita disagreed with the Honorable Rukuta on simple administrative matters. Mm. That's 2018. Mm. Actually, 2018, mm. yes. So instead of like engaging as cabinet ministers and probably putting their matters to the uh, prime minister and uh, arbitrate on their simple administrative uh, uh, disagreements, Minister Anita was all over the press using words like mafia. We have a senior presidential advisor on uh, on media who's always calling every mafia, and uh, you wonder. And these people stay in these positions; they are not uh, whipped into proper discipline or expected of them. So, quite alarming. And everybody would now take it like that. And Kisache, that's why she's now free to begin addressing. Just imagine on the gate of uh, Supreme Court. So, quite bad uh, behavior. It didn't begin yesterday. It began some time back, and. It's all over government. But you see, let me ask myself, perhaps we are, uh, do judges, as far as I know, just you could advise me on this, they're not even supposed to go to bars if they have yeah. to drink, has to drink mm. at his home. There are certain protections they give them which mm. elevates their pedigree mm. and, and raises them above everybody so that when they make a judgment, people mm. think so. If mm. this court, the becomes a, another theater for political sloganeering and the political propaganda and all this what is likely to become of it in the eyes of the public i think like everybody else has said uh, you see the interesting thing is that that behavior was maintained when the judges were paid very little hmm? when they had so little in terms of benefits mm. now government has been struggling to increase their benefits uh, pay them more comfortably mm. and you see all this drama and, and it's bringing out a lot of other things. It's sad that we're discussing the general malaise, eh? knocking off one institution after the other. And now it in their, in their own image. Maybe they were, they were trying to uh, artificially uphold this 
view or version of Uganda that uh, does not exist. But, but, but Andrew, just figure from uh, perhaps the question should be what's the incentive in the current state of affairs? What's the incentive? to remain, uh, you know, that removed and, you know, prestigious. and There's very li little incentive. Oh, perhaps what is the incentive for uh, just such a to act like this? That should be the question. The, to, to act the way she does. Mm. You, you see, because... First does of she all, plan to run for member of parliament on a loop ticket so that <laughs> she's laying a, a foundation? No, I think uh, that... To, does she hope that in taking a position like this, because when you don't having been Museveni's personal lawyer, having been mm. a cabinet minister in Museveni's government, perhaps mm. has some credibility issues, mm. given that donors always like judges who um, dissent from many African things. She may go to the International Court of Justice or the International Criminal Court. That's how Sertinda made himself. I, I don't but, know. But, but um, this judge is probably about 70-something now. She's, uh, she has all the entitlements and the benefits of her position even when she's out of office as per the law that was passed by the Katurebi, uh, uh, the last, the, the last uh, uh, the uh, uh, that, that he presided over. The, so there is, not, there, is, uh, there is no really void or, or, or privilege that she probably would be chasing, uh, grand privilege she would be chasing. Abroad. But I think that, it, like I said, it, would be, it, is very, it, would be, it is very naive of us to expect that a certain anybody or any person or any institution or body in the country can remain an island in a, a theater of, you know, of drama. And, you, you look at me, the military, M7 is a hallowed uh, like institution. At the height of uh, Kali's uh, issues, we had the generals going into the press and accusing each other of, you know, <laughs> things of making insinuations, you know, before, before the public and inviting the public to play arbiter or to take sides on anything. So every institution now seems to be playing to, to the, the gallery, gallery. To, you know, to, no, to but the gallery. That, and, uh, uh, we, we have run out of time, actually. We have to take another break. When mm. we come back, we shall be discussing the death mm. of His Excellency President John Pombe Magufuli of Tanzania. With KFM's Hot Seat. It's hot, it's live, provocative, and digs deep into the issues. It's KFM's Hot Seat. Rise and shine. This is the KFM Hour of Power. I, I, I would go to my car pumped up, saying, yes, 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 I can. The KFM Hour of Power. Life is short, and the more fit you are, the more people you can help. Every weekday, 5 to 6 a.m. I can do this. I can make this happen. No matter how bad it is or how bad it gets, I'm going to make it. The KFM Hour of Power. Inspiring you to a brighter day. Extraordinary could be right there in front of you. Without you even knowing it. It's something unique. Rich and rewarding. Full of character. A bold expression of flavor like no other. Expect extraordinary. Guinness made of more. Alcohol is not for sale to persons under the age of 18. Please drink responsibly. Enjoy the world of convenience with NSSF's customer self help channels. Companies and all our employers can now apply for NSSF clearance certificates online without visiting the NSSF branch. This service is free for all active employers. Visit the NSSF website on www.nssfug.org or call our toll-free line on 0800-386-773 for more information. Terms and conditions apply. NSSF, a better life. Day loading. Uh-oh, traffic jam. Unleash Fender Falls. Orange flavor explosion! Level completed. Oh no, a long queue. Open bubbles of pure sunshine and toys. <laughs> Level completed. A meeting about a meeting that could have been an email. Fruity fun power. <laughs> Level completed. Unleash the power of playfulness. Fanta, color every moment. Get the best loans on market with Now Now Loans from Stambic Bank. In only two minutes, you could have your loan approved using your mobile phone and achieve your dreams in no time with an interest rate of as low as 15.9%. You can also enjoy zero arrangement fees when you transfer your loan to us and get free accident medical insurance for one year with Now Now Loans. Contact us on our social media pages or call 0800 250 250 for information. Stambic Bank, it can be. Stambic Bank is regulated by Bank of Uganda and customer deposits are protected by the Deposit Protection Fund. 933, 933, KFM. KFM. The hottest 
debate on all relevant topics live on KFM's Hot Seat tonight. KFM's Hot Seat covers all the relevant topics every weekday, 7 to 8 p.m. Welcome back to this edition of the Hot Seat featuring a panel of the most experienced journalists discussing major events of the week from the uh, Afro- uh, the Leo Africa uh, Institute. Institute. We have Kwes Tabaru from Makere University, third year student of law, uh, Joel Mkisa. From the Government Media Center, Obed Katurebe. From now to Gende, former member of uh, former candidate for Russia, the greatest county in the whole country, of course, is uh, Charles Mangusha. From Nira, uh, uh, no, 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 not from Nira, <laughs> from uh, Watch Tula representing the Bahima on this show, <laughs> Evan Rugamba, and of course, representing the witch doctors on this show is the CIA. Uh, John Pope Bagufuli, I want to begin now clockwork. Mm. Uh, uh, he had already uh, embarked on this campaign of uh, demolishing illegal structures in uh, places like Kariako. So we visited them and we saw the demolition exercise that uh, that was going there. And I remember coming back and uh, I, I think this was in the midst of the hype, especially on social media, what would Magufuli do? Very many uh, aspirational young Africans and uh, many o- civil society types were lauding him, saying his, how he's... Uh, He's a different kind of leader, how he's a new breath on the African political scene. And I'll, my views of him then were, were tempered because I felt whatever his approach was, uh, it was always going to be met with the, with the reality of what Tanzania was. Um, a poor country like all the others, but although stable, which had really been eaten to the core. Uh, by corruption. Okay, we we have to come to uh, 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 Joel. Joel, Magufuli, <laughs> one of his greatest contributions was to deny that there was COVID in Tanzania, and apparently it is COVID that finally killed him. Sure. I think. Oh yeah, I think he used the word apparently, but also, I don't think he was a denialist. I think he he disagreed on the Bano method. No, actually, he, they did. It. Tanzania government officially and him personally mm-hmm. announced that the Tanzania was COVID free. Trust me. Later, yes. he was, it was yes. the, the, he Initially, first, he uh, said, "Let us pray to it." Mm. Then, after at a particular point last year, in around about May, he said Tanzania was COVID free, and they stopped reporting all mm. uh, tests and things like that. No, but 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 the, by the time Magufuli went on bed, Magufuli had met the risen Lord, just like uh, like Saul. He had changed the narrative to prayer. Even the minister came and demonstrated what hubs you can use for COVID. So mm-hmm. I think to that extent. But me, the the wider picture I, I have I have seen that we as a country, as Uganda, need to see out of the Magufuli death is to always check the health bill of our president. I it is it is practice elsewhere on here that I don't see a president giving frequently updating us on his health bill. Because I think that, sh- that, that that could be so important, and that's a problem in Tanzania first. Because at, when Magufuli was sick and they were trying to hide everything, I, I remember the prime minister asking people that, "Why are you so concerned about Magufuli's health? Is he a pastor that he didn't at- attend ch- Sunday service?" <laughs> so, for me, one of the moment, what well, it's one of those moments that we get to uh, to ask our so, president. So, so you should always be telling us how, how he says this. Let me, let me come to this. I, honestly, uh, I felt that Magufuli was extremely arbitrary. From the time uh, the whole of Africa was uh, praising him, I found his actions and becoming of a leader. You cannot enter a hospital and observe things with the eye and fire whole management and everybody. You go by the roadside, you go to a ministry and find a decision. Instead of First, taking time to start and understand what is happening, he was taking very uh, arbitrary and uninformed uh, positions. Uh, there is a company in Tanzania, many companies showed them a bill of 300 billion. Now, imagine that Tanzania's revenue per year is about 7 billion. In 10 years, they would have collected 70 billion. In 30 years, they would have collected 210. In 40 years, so 500 billion, 300 billion would have been collected in about 50 years. How does he think that somehow any company could have a tax liability? Of 50 years of uh, Tanzania's gross tax revenues. Well, Tanz- I, mean, I mean, I just could not stand the guy. Andrew, I want to disagree with you. He, well, he had his. Uh, I know you have uh, you Africans. You like arbitrary government, not arbitrary. even though you insist on institutions. Well, call it arbitrariness or whatever. But this man moved his country to a middle income status. Oh, please, uh, uh, the most. Uh, By the way, uh, can I ask you what is middle income status in case? In, let's in not go into the economics of that one. But what I'm saying. Mm. The most grand projects 
uh, were moved because of his uh, uh, pragmatism, uh, the standard gauge rail, the expansion of the airport, the flyovers and uh, hydropower the dams. Andrew, those are not exaggerations. Those are real. Mm? Let me tell you something, because we were not informed. Mm -hmm. By the time he came into government, the contractor was already on site. Mm -hmm. These are contracts that had been negotiated and discussed. Just imagine. Yeah. Contractors imagine can be on, on, on site. We have one load, 21 kilometer stretch that has gone for almost 20 years. Mm -hmm. Contractors mm -hmm. can be on site. Yes, but it's very different because you have different his, land laws. And on his, mm -hmm. his extreme pragmatism, on, especially on corruption, you can't deny him that one. So, and so, probably so, what you call so a you would say, assuming Bob Wayne had won the election and Karuma Dam inaugurated you know, later this year, no, it, it then you would say Bob Wayne. Came and built no, no, but, and, and and let me make my observation. Maybe mm. you can dig holes uh, in, in all mm. that. But he's he, he's he, what you call a bitterness. At least that's what is required of a, a very third world countries. If you have to follow the law and you are just third world uh, like we are, we just remain stagnant. You're not moving. Okay, Charles you Mawusha, we have had the opinion of. Uh, okay. Of, 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 so in other words, we should disregard the law. We should, as a third world country, we need arbitrary rulers, not yeah. just dictators, because many dictators well, follow well, the rules. Um, but um, mm. Magufuli was quite a controversial figure. They say he did a lot of things for Tanzania. But which ones? Uh, the, uh, well, um, infrastructure development, even if he built on what others had done. But what people have kind of um, blacked out in this glowing tribute, and right from the time he rose to power, is his uh, extreme high-handedness in dealing with members of the opposition, in dealing with the media, in dealing with... Uh, uh, and, and and that was really Actually, really. Actually, that's not my criticism of him. I don't huh? mind. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, I mind less mm -hmm. how he deals with the media and the opposition, but mm -hmm. I just mind how you run a system. A system must be run on particular rules. You cannot come. No, no, no. I think I think these systems, these systems, uh, especially in Africa, need to be jolted like Magufuli did mm. in Tanzania. Yes. To get to function. Mm. I, I mean, we have so, slept. So, give me an example of an institution he jolted at work. Because the, the little that I know mm -hmm. is he comes into the Ministry of Energy, he finds a whole team that had been negotiating with the government of Uganda, and the government of Uganda was not moving, but they had gained a lot of experience. For him, he thinks the problem is his people. He fires the whole... Uh, yeah, he uh, told President Museven to fire Doris Akol. Yes, he fires everybody. <laughs> After he has fired them, <laughs> the Uganda government and Total go to negotiate and the people who had been put there did not know anything. So the whole process ended up delaying by one year. The same team he had fired, the, the new ones tried to go to them to learn what exactly were the issues, where had we reached. And for one year, everything was... Yeah, but Andrew, that was... The, so that so was for me... The, 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 the point I just want to be given an example that here yeah, it is possible that you can jolt the system through such shock. But you I want say, to be given first of all, Andrew, example. you know very well that mm. by the end of Kikwete's reign, first of all, the, the, the way that CCM party is entrenched and mm. the deep state inside the in, inside CCM, CCM, Kikwete was like the patron saint of that, uh, of that mm. deep state mm. in, 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 in Tanzania. Yes. Mm. By the time of Kikwete's departure, the corruption and that, the entrenchment of the deep state was at its peak. Kikwe, uh, in fact, Magufuli in his first comment says, in a press conference says, I have come to understand that there are some people who come, who look around Tanzania and find there is no room to meet within <laughs> Tanzania and they have to go abroad to get a room in which to do what, in which to negotiate, to negotiate deals. So he comes, the first of that, that unpredictability now shakes up almost every, everybody. Mm. He, these, those flyovers you're talking about, they, they are reversals, they are contracts. He had to reverse with the, with the, the Chinese, with mining companies, with the, where he's saying these, these deals are mad or are crazy or, or what. He had to force concessions from, from uh, some investors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He had to decline banks, uh, loans, loan requests by proposals by World Bank and, you know, with some ridiculous, uh, ridiculous terms. Oh, that she thought that the deep state yes, was... but as long as even these things are blanket, we can never get the yes. actual... Let me give you an example uh, mm. of the standard gauge railway. Mm. He came and said this price is very expensive and mm. said we have to reduce it. Those mm. people had to reduce the alignment and the configuration of the railway, which reduced the speed by a significant margin. Mm. You get it. Mm. And, and therefore, what he got in terms of, you know, the, you can build a train mm. with very high initial capital expenses with very low operating costs. Mm. What he did in his change, mm. he reduced the in initial investment in, in the building of the railway, increased operating costs. So in the long term, actually, the Tanzanian railway is going to be very expensive. Because there is a way you align a standard the gauge railway that makes it efficient and reduces uh, the wear and tear and reduces your operational you, costs. You so from my knowledge, mm. in fact, the 
the adjustments he made on the standard gauge railway he reduced the capital investment but increased operating costs in the in the medium term and long term Tanzania will pay much more highly you, for you a poor quality service for he went every, for because for, was, ev for every project you may make a, a criticism on it but they are grand grand projects so, for example that Bagamoyo put that they were going to invest and where China was where China is sinking this entire continent in debt there are some mm. some ridiculous uh, uh, agreements or investments that he had able to pull back. my problem just to conclude for me was the <laughs> conservative populism where he said school girls cannot go or should be dismissed from school or we have to pray against the coronavirus we have uh, th there's a certain conservative populism that I think for me was the problem I had with you. Of course, the I always want me a specific thing that he did correctly. The few that I, people deal with, I try to find out, I find that he actually messed them up. That's true. And of course, it goes back to um, the whole, the whole Including cutting for unnecessary foreign travels of uh, civil servants and saving billions of money. Please. Is, is that also yes, not okay, things that, uh, But we need to know when he cut them. Uh, uh, what uh, was uh, the uh, consequence? Yes. What were those people going to do? Let me give you an example. Paul, he was saying they take a very long delegation. Me, I was a, a consultant on the Doha rounds. So we had to go to Doha, we had to go to Bali in Indonesia, we had to go to Cancun in Mexico, negotiating the world trade. Uganda would send a delegation of eight. The Americans would send a delegation of 7,000. Every single agreement they had signed, they would have about 30 or 15 lawyers to negotiate every comma, every T. I realized these Africans had no capacity to participate because they're not there. You come and say, oh, no, the delegation is too big. What do you mean it's too big? The issue is, what is that delegation supposed to go and do? No, the People big follow the top line. People follow the top line. So I want you to justify for me that this delegation was big because yeah. they were going to do shopping, demonstrate it. But many times, we make criticisms of government officials going on things where they're supposed to go and do something. So all of a sudden, you have Tanzania absent at international conferences where people are negotiating agreements, and even all the experts, the guy had said, don't go. Timothy Kali again. It, it goes back to, I guess, the last uh, 60, 70 years of uh, what you call the independence era in Africa, and <coughs> our failure essentially to either sustain or build a system run on you know laws, procedures, bureaucracy, as tiresome it seems. And of course, after the collapse of Africa in the 1970s and 80s, there comes this new hope in the mid 1990s, the, st the beginning of the story in 1996, of the new breed of African leaders. Be it uh, a whole range of arbitrary leaders is what they are: Paul Kagame of Rwanda, Yoram Seven Uganda, Isaiah Sefok Eritrea. Recently, of course, this president Abiy now it now his successor Abiy Ahmed in Ethiopia. Then Magufuli. We're always looking. Abiy was not Melis's successor. There was Salah in between. Hela Maria in between. Yes, but I mean the, the current. Mm. But all of them, if you notice, the Ethiopian Prime Minister and Magufuli, same story. This person who infuses energy into a despondent and discouraged society. And mm. yes, there seems to be that initial need to shake up the system. But you see. 75% of government, like what Andrew is saying, is whether you want it or not run on blind, impersonal rule-based systems with their logic, step by step, like the way you see the board of Scrabble. Each letter connects to the other and forms a logical organ. And if you try and go past that, you will have this thing that you see in Tanzania. The president doesn't go for international conferences, appears to save money, only for him to go and then, let's say, arbitrarily cancel, let's say, parts of a, a long-term government contract. And then what he saved in your failure to travel to international conferences is overturned by this. So essentially, what it comes down to was just the same old Idi Amin, as I say. Snakes and ladders. Snakes and ladders, yes. We have taken that break and we'll be right back. KFM's Hot Seat. It's hot, it's live, provocative, and digs deep into the issues. It's KFM's Hot Seat. Catch the fire tonight on KFM's Hot Seat. Every weekday, 7 to 8 p.m. It's hot, it's live, provocative, and digs deep into the issues. It's KFM's Hot Seat. The hottest debate on all relevant topics, live on KFM's Hot Seat tonight. KFM's Hot Seat. Every weekday, 7 to 8 p.m. KFM's Hot Seat. Only on 933 KFM. Business Tip. Powered by... Entrepreneurship Institute of Africa, a program of Finding XY. Develop a business strategy. In a competitive market, you need to understand the strengths and weaknesses of your business in order to develop an action plan for your next steps to gain a competitive advantage. Business Tip is brought to you by Entrepreneurship Institute of Africa, a program of Finding XY. 
Sweetheart, yes, kindly pick up the kids on your way back home. I'm a bit held up. Ah, I got quite a bit to do. I have to go to the garage, drop by office, go to women to apply for a new electricity connection for our new home. A quick gamba. <laughs> no, dear. You don't have to go to the Umeme offices anymore to apply for power. Use my Umeme online. You can now apply for an electricity connection online anytime and anywhere. Simply visit our website www.umeme.co.ug slash my Umeme online. Select get connected to apply or download the Umeme app. Umeme, powering Uganda. Umeme is regulated by the Electricity Regulatory Authority. Are you done washing the clothes? Madam, I did long time ago. What do you mean long time ago? Yes, I used Blue Magic Laundry Bar Soap. It lathers well and aids fast washing with softness on my hands. Besides, Blue Magic leaves the clothes sparkling clean and smelling nice with lemon perfume. Blue Magic Laundry Bar Soap. A product of Bidco. Now in one kilogram and 600 grams. Available in all outlets near you. When WHO declared COVID-19 as a pandemic, the Ministry of Health reactivated the National Task Force. So from history, we have been managing the previous pandemics, SARS, Ebola, and our motto was to stay safe in order to treat others. We are looking at training healthcare workers continuously. We've applied this capacity building to the entire country. We should continue getting the essential services that we have been getting before, so that we don't die from the other condition when we are trying to prevent COVID-19. Our mission to ensure the safety of Ugandans is long-standing, and we promise to see it through till COVID-19 is eradicated. This message is proudly brought to you by the Ministry of Health and JICA Uganda. It's live, provocative, and digs deep into the issues. It's KFM's hot seat, only on 933 KFM. Welcome back to this segment of the, welcome to this last segment of this edition of the hot seat on this Friday, the 19th of March 2021. And with me in the studio, of course, is our usual panel of pundits and, ex, and experienced journalists who discuss the major events of the week. Concluding on uh, Magofuli, I felt that it is good when you come and find an entrenched system that needs to be shaken to shake that system. But you need to shake that system not on the basis of emotions, not on the basis of your anecdotal observations. It's so important for you to put in place a robust system where at least you do some minimum investigation, establish facts, and take a decision. But this idea of taking a decision based on your eye observations and feelings eh, can be quite destructive. And I think Magufuli overall, hmm. uh, the positive things he may have realized in Tanzania, but I think that overall he was a bad leader for that country. No, but these are lessons for Tanzania and for CCM. First and foremost, I think right now it's the second oldest, uh, well, the second oldest party in Africa in terms of how many years they've served in government. They've had uh, six presidents now. Nyerere had his issues. He tanked that economy. Al Hassan Mwinyi, not so much done. Benjamin Mukapa, a lot of promise, uh, really didn't deliver much. Uh, Kikwete, of course, will always be remembered for the corruption. But I Magufuli, must add that Chikwete presided over the fastest rates of growth. Equally, of equally presided over the most uh, uh, corrupt mm -hmm. governments in Tanzania. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, Magufuli's emergence was very important for, for CCM. And I think as time goes by, CCM will thank him for having arisen at the time that he did because that system had gotten so rotten and needed to be shaken. So he was an outsider in very many ways. So is, uh, is his successor, uh, Samia uh, Suluhu, and uh, she's from Zanzibar, which... Why do you think he has uh, shaken the corruption of the system? Because CCM had become so entrenched, they had never thought that uh, anyone outside, uh, um, you know, the people who are within the deep state could overturn the system and change it. Magufuli, in just five years, managed to threaten that. And you know, before he died, there was already talk about him running for a third term, or even possibly uh, abolishing term limits. So Guys, the system, I think CCM will become more, mm. more, will, will become more democratic mm. with weaker candidates, and we may not see uh, an arbitrary president like Magufuli. Equally, we will not see an entrenched system like the one that Kikwete presided over. Charles Mangusha, we're editing at the East African, perhaps you have a regional perspective. I just want to know, Kwezi is making assertions, but I need them to prove it to me. So what did he change? 
Uh, well, uh, what well, evidence is there that anyway corruption in any way, shape, or form reduced? Y you see, uh, you can threaten the corrupt, and corruption takes new forms without it actually changing in substance. I, I, I think uh, I don't know how you can run a corruption. system like that of Tanzania without corruption because it's a glue that holds. I, I, I think to understand together. to understand that impact that Quez is talking about would require us to understand uh, what delayed the announcement of Magufuli's passing and the behind-the-scenes negotiations mm. to get Suluhu mm. in the seat. Mm. Because there's been a lot of jostling, jostling mm. behind the scenes. And that will tell us the extent of the entrenchment of uh, corruption if he was building around his own cabal mm. uh, during, <coughs> this, uh, during his second term mm. and what he built over the last five years. And then number two is, um, I it's a bit surprising some of the decisions he took because he was part of the state, mm. part of the CCM mm. from way back so no, he was no, not no. like he was new he came in 2010 eh? he came in 95 he, he was an mp he, from 95 yes yeah. he's been an mp from 95 he was in cabinet so he understood the, but the first time he comes in cabinet is either 2010 or 29 he had been cabinet minister for 10 years actually he was minister in his first term as as mp as minister of state for ah. works mm. yes so it's uh, somebody who had been part <coughs> of the system to come and assume like you're doing everything mm. new mm. that you didn't know that you're jolting the whole system, that you didn't know who are, who are the actors. I, I think quite um, will be for historians to study. But to understand the extent of what he has been able to achieve, that jolt for me, I still think is important. Okay. Guys, let me tell you, my, my limited knowledge of CCM and how to run no, no, CCM is a kind of monopoly but, company. Yes. Mm -hmm. Monopoly company. Mm -hmm. You know, to get a contract to do so many things requires you to be part of the CCM system. Mm -hmm. Corruption is the glue that holds CCM together and makes it function. But I think that to renew that corruption, when people get this, corruption reached a point of getting discredited, they needed someone to come and act as if he was removing it in order to renew hope and renew faith in CCM. And that he achieved. But that is the only way you could reproduce and continue with corruption because otherwise it was going to see CCM. It was not, the aim was not to eliminate corruption, but to give it a new series of life by pretending that like he was acting against it. Otherwise, without corruption, CCM cannot retain power. But you yeah. can tell us what yeah, you're thinking Yeah, but Andrew, I still disagree with you because uh, you belong to the other school of thought of runaway capitalists. At least it's not in your, uh, a new submission. That's how we've always believed um all commentaries from uh, tanzanians global uh, scholars uh, researchers at this point that the man drove a, 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 a huge transformative agenda for t tanzania they all agree so what transformed they all agree but what are the specifics in terms of uh he's left uh, tanzania is serious construction mm -hmm. site Corruption. He made at least corruption. Extended the electricity. Now I, mean, I think yeah. about eighty percent of Tanzania. The biggest. And he was, it was around 40, twenty percent or thirty percent of the time. Yes, he, he, he coverage. The, the, I think electricity coverage in Tanzania. He considered the biggest uh, hydropower dam in in East Africa. He made corruption a dangerous thing. You see, the, the uh, most important thing is that public servants began fearing, began fearing they know if you don't lose your job, probably you'll be in, in prison. But what makes corruption become difficult to stamp out in countries like Uganda is because you know you play around with the law, with the what, with the what, and you still be in office. That's why you see this arrogant and uh, nauseating corruption no, no, <laughs> not, get, not getting uh, 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 checked. So mm. over and above, I think this man he could have. Yeah, I agree with you, a bitterness. In, I think when we had just begun in his, his first term, he was he was in overdrive and made those mistakes you have just highlighted. But has moved on, and that's why he, he, uh, Tanzanians liked him. Okay. They knew what they were getting from him. John, because I want to hear your take on the, your last word on Magufuli and the, his his uh, propensity for arbitrary government, which Africans seem to like so much. Well, what can, I, uh, what can I say about Magufuli? I think he's a man who campaigned on a platform to redeem his people from whatever he was redeeming. By the way, I he must comment that the Tanzanian people do not agree with him because in the last election, he had literally to shoot his own opponent. To he just could not get re-elected anyway. <laughs> you can't be no, so no, no. sure. He <laughs> broke you see the fact that um, the president, for example, there is a, uh, a lot of state uh, violence in the election. does not mean that without violence, 
he would not have won. Mm. In 2011, a man ran a, a violence-free campaign here and, and, and he won with a significant <laughs> number. <laughs> 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 ah. Chadema, Chadema was even weaker this time that even their chairman, the chairman of a party, had to lose in his own constituents. Yeah. Uh, m- uh, smaller number of MPs. So, sincerely, you can't say that uh, Jepam did not deserve his win. <laughs> you see, Andrew has, is, is very suspicious, of, which is very strange because he, ha- he admires a certain uh, photo prototype of <laughs> Mago Polis. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we can discuss that all over the time. PK, no, PK no, is very no, different no, no. from Mago Polis, I should tell you. <laughs> you see, President Kagame is very fast <laughs> and decisive in making decisions, but he does not make arbitrary decisions. He, because I think he comes from an intelligence background, he will get his guys, they investigate, establish the facts for him. Once he has his facts, he will move quick, quickly and decisively. He does not enter a hospital and find some mistake and then orders people fired. Mm-hmm. And, and, and that's the difference between being decisive, but it is important to make informed decisions. The problem with Magufuli is I felt he made very many emotional decisions to the detriment of Tanzania. I think that in the long term, actually, Magufuli did more harm to Tanzania than Let good. It's possible Andrew. that his arbitrariness created some good. But well, 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 the, the, the jury is out, is still out if there. If President Kagame today, is, because Kagame has the benefit of having reconstructed the Rwandan state since 1995 up to now, so he's not entering something new. But if you transplanted him from his country now and brought him into a different country, he would turn things, he would, uh, turn things upside yeah, down. Yeah, not yeah, on uh, emotions, uh, but on best of hard facts. Uh, <laughs> yes, not on the best of, uh, of feelings <laughs> and emotions and anecdotal <laughs> observations, but on hard facts. Okay, guys, we have run out of time. We have to end this discussion. Thank you so much, my panelists, for joining us. And our listeners, we love you. Get a kiss here. Mwah, 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 mwah. We'll be right back next week on Friday with another interesting discussion. Good evening. The hottest debate on all relevant oh. topics. Live. I have always, I have.